volcanoes, the boundaries of the Earth, ladies and gentlemen, where the very wheels of planetary evolution still turn. And where I am here to tell you, you will find the only viable doorway to the inner world. Doorway to what? The inner world. Egyptians, Greeks, the Norse, Romans, all told of vast inhabitable regions beneath the earth. The same people who gave us science, logic, astronomy. This volcanic bubble, if you will, is just one of thousands that weave a path to the earth's core. Estimated at over 3,000 miles across and as high in places as 5,000 feet, you could slide the entire United States into it. If one had proper craft, they could descend into a live volcano. Is this a joke? No, they could descend into a live volcano where enormous temperatures where enormous temperatures weaken the geological crust to just the solid side of liquid. Then a sonic blast of suitable amplitude could open the momentary doorway to the inner world. It's, it's very clear. It's possible. You're crazy when they call you a lunatic, a crackpot, a dreamer. Why won't they believe? Those minds can't be forced open. Put a move on it. I've got a surprise for you. They really call me a dreamer? Put, 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 put a move on. Huh? Behold. The Geo Explorer. Will it work? There's only one way to find out. Forward. Ever forward. Activity increasing fast. Suggest you launch as soon as possible. 
Follow me, please. Mr. Wentworth is ready for you now. Welcome, Mr. Turner. Thanks for coming. Thank you, sir. Your uncle's theories are a hobby of mine. Brilliant man, Jim Harley. Unorthodox, yet a free thinker. Priceless commodity, a mind like that. Which is why you are here. Exactly. Now, sir, I have factored out my uncle's seismic predictive methods. We're aware of your results. Excuse me. Uh, Christopher Edison Turner, Dr. Margot Peterson. Oh, I'm sorry. You know one another? We've met. Dr. Peterson and I come from opposite sides of the uh, scientific tracks. <laughs> Why is she here? Dr. Peterson is head of my research division. I thought you were aware of that. No, sir, I, uh, I wasn't. I'm a futurist, Mr. Turner. I'm concerned with where we're going. And we're rushing headlong into oblivion. Pollution, overpopulation, apathy. We live in a planetary community, Mr. Turner. Well, my father was making billions destroying the surface. And I used my uh, allowance to tunnel under. Life in outer space is centuries off. Inner space is not. You are not the only one, for varying reasons, who is intent on going under. Whereas I am the only one rich enough to risk paying for it. And that's why I'm here, sir. And this is how I'm going to get there. Four crew, powered by thermal steam turbines, once we're under. And this is going to render all previous tunneling technology Obsolete. Sonic blaster. Behold the Avenger. 182 feet long, 200 tons, fully loaded with a four inch thick solid titanium hull on a triad of all terrain thread. Seven crew with room for three more. Self generating fuel supply, completely amphibious in nature. The Sonic four units are incorporated in. The you stole my design, my research! Liberated your ideas, Mr. Turner, expanded them, and started construction almost two years ago. Sue me. Or come on board as a full partner, Captain Turner. There's just one condition. 
What's that? Dr. Peterson goes with you. What? As my personal representative, if you like. Well, she's been with the program from the beginning. She'll co-supervise mission preparations. And you will, of course, be in command, Captain, once the mission is underway. It's an irrevocable condition, Mr. Turner. Decide. I'm an insanely busy man. For what it's worth, Turner, you made the right choice. Now, should we discuss the rest of the crew? Fine. Who'd you have in mind? Dr. Teshu Ishikawa of the Biobotanical Institute. She's the world's foremost authority on plant-based food sources and the ship's medical officer. Good. Done. Here's the rest of the crew. Unacceptable. 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 Miss Peterson, when's the last time your life was in danger? I mean, besides some virus jumping out of a Petri dish at you. What does that have to do with it? Assembling what? this team is about balance. Can't go poking around worlds unknown with a bunch of lab coats. There's an inherent risk factor. I'm well aware of the risks. No, not risk. Risk factor. A statistical variable defining response to danger and the unknown. The stuff that attacks the lizard brain in all of us and then either cripples you or makes you stronger. Lab coats have never been exposed to that. These people have. In fact, they like it. These three fit every conceivable physical situation we could possibly encounter. Sandra Miller, psychologist and champion rock climber. Also spelunker. Master caver. Anthony Estrella. World's youngest jet aircraft test pilot and video game champion. Has the world's fastest hand-eye reaction time. Joe Briggs. Ex Navy SEAL. Still holds the all time solo descent diving record. This only makes six crew members. What about the seventh? Well, I, ha I haven't got a recent photo, but it's Dr. Cecil Chalmers. What? The decision's already made. There's nothing you can do about it. You can't be serious. What possible function could that supernatural crackpot? Dr. Chalmers is the categorical expert on legendarology and all mythic lore dealing with the inner world. So what? Of what there is to know about where we're going. He knows everything. He advised my uncle. Did your uncle a lot of good? Closed minds, Miss Peterson. Every Great civilization has stories of a vast, a magical inner world. My uncle believed that. Chalmers knows it. And that is why I'm going down there to prove it. You haven't sold out, Chris. Now, 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 not another word. You made the right decision. Besides, Wentworth may have stolen your ideas, but once we're under, we will have effectively stolen his ship, so to speak. By Jove, it's brilliant! I'll be with you Monday week as ordered. Captain! I'm in love. Hey, hey. 
Can't you read? You touch this stuff the wrong way, boom. All they find is a shoe heel. Thank you, my man. Now, it's critical you all appreciate the danger of this project, constituting a risk factor ten times that of any NASA mission to date. Now, if you decide to sign on, you'll be paid one million dollars in cash. The mission should take six months. Hey, not that I couldn't use a cool mill. Maybe get me a portion or two. But, Captain, I couldn't help but notice we're sitting on the edge of one of nature's time bombs. Is there something you're not telling us, Captain? Everything you need to know is detailed in the manuals once you've signed the contracts and secrecy agreements. According to our data, within a year, Mount Oliver is due for a major eruption. Now, our training and preparation is scheduled to be completed in six months, well ahead of the window of opportunity. Now, at that time, we will launch, administering a sonic blast to the molten lava, opening a momentary doorway to the inner world. Well, that about wraps it up, sir. I'll take that return ticket now. You haven't heard everything yet, Mr. Briggs. I heard enough. Now, I've dived everything from oil to toxic waste. Even did a gig in a nuclear reactor once because some fool dropped his Walkman in it. But I have never heard of anybody diving through solid damn rock. Not solid, liquid. Right, liquid damn rock. Do you know what kind of temperatures you're talking about? We're not free diving through magma, Briggs. Well, then how in the hell are we supposed to get down there? In a sub? Not exactly. Welcome to your new home. The Avenger. Oh, Margo, this is incredible. You at last, don't you think, Chris? <laughs> Reminds me of myself in many ways. Ah! Jeez. You broke it. No, next time I break it. The systems, Mr. Chalmers, required a housing of this size. No more, no less. What if we encounter a subterranean sea? The adventure is completely omnifibious in nature. Like a frog. No, that's a dual environment species. This is omnifibious. Not all terrain, any terrain. We're gonna fly this. Yes, Mr. Estrella, we are. We're also gonna drive it and tunnel it through the Earth. What's the power source? It's in the reactor chamber, back this way. Just ahead of the main thrusters. Nice. 60 pounds of synthetic, fusionable, self-regenerating material. Has indefinite range. No stops in Texaco. <laughs> Damn straight. Well, I still don't get it. It's so big. How can we possibly move around down there? I mean, what if you run into, like, like a really small cave or something? I thought you'd never ask. That's why I designed the sonic blaster. And why I perfected it. We've prepared a small demonstration. With your permission, Captain? Absolutely. It's over this way, people. Commence with the sonic bore test, Tom. Now hear this. Now hear this. Sonic bore fire. Everybody ready? Power grid engaging, target coordinates locked and binding. All systems green and ready to fire on command. Prepare to fire. Fire! on every existing geostructure known to man. Nothing withstands it. When do we go inside? Right now! If anyone has any reservations about the project, now's the time to decline. I wouldn't miss it for the world.
honest about it, I was still burning inside from Wentworth having stolen my work. But that first day when the crew all signed on and came aboard, I realized if this whole crazy project was going to get off the ground, I'd have to put that behind me now. For reasons I can only guess at, Wentworth had put me in charge. I was their captain. And it didn't take long to see that was bound to be as much of an adventure as getting to the center of the Earth. Don't even think about it. Like cramming these seven Type A Gonzos in a titanium tin can for the next six months and keeping them from blasting holes in each other. Not that the adventure didn't have its creature comforts, but it was clear my job was going to be looking past even what Margot's whiz bang computer could see. Oh. We're outfitted for every possible circumstance that Devin could anticipate. Hey, you know, Captain, I think I'll bunk right here. I don't think that would be appropriate. Who's Devin? Sounds like a babe to me. Digital Electroplasmic Virtual Intelligence and Navigator. Devin for short. Good morning, Devin. Good morning, Captain Turner. Is this the crew? Yes, it is. This is Dr. Tessa Tess. Ishikawa, your work precedes you, Doctor. I've so looked forward to meeting you. And you, Dr. Chalmers. I hope we have time for lengthy conversation. Indeed. She controls every system on the ship, Cecil. I wouldn't mess with her. Devin, if you please. The upper deck stations control the geoscience evaluation systems while all other mechanical and operational modes from sonic bore deployment to flying are controlled from the flight deck. Navigation shares a redundant link with Dr. Peterson. I had to admit, Devin gave new meaning to the word database. But I still wasn't about to just follow the bouncing ball, no matter how many megabytes she had up her sleeve. At least not when hanging 10 on the edge of an active volcano, which I knew could have the nasty habit of ignoring everyone's projections. And all the more reason to get right down to business. Step one was to have Margo familiarize our crew with the ship. Of course, knowing Lestrella, he was in a hurry to just get, well, familiar. And the truth was, Margo did seem more at home programming Devon. When it came to anything high tech, no question, Margo was in a class by herself. But somehow she couldn't seem to cut much slack for us mere humans. Fortunately, I knew Sandy and her smile would be as good at pulling us all together as she was at scaling mountains. Not to mention the famous Dr. Tessu Itsukawa, who had her own curious formula for uniting the crew. Oh, Margaret was right. Tessu was first rate as a medical officer. But she hauled all of us in for so many tests, Briggs took to calling her Marcus Welby. I don't think he meant anything by it. Hell, within the first week, Briggs had picked a nickname for most of us. So I'm sure it was just a coincidence, but when the time came for us to gather in the galley and try out some of Tessie's more bionic grub, well, for some reason, she seemed to think Briggs was the man for the job. Meatloaf. I'm not sure, but I don't think he ever called her Marcus Welby after that. I mean, it didn't take a rocket scientist to know it would be tough enough learning to get comfortable in such tight quarters without looking to rattle each other's cages. And that, I'm afraid, included Chalmers' beloved Briar Number 12. Not exactly a big hit with fitness freaks like Briggs and Sandy. So I had no choice but to tell him, Cecil, where there's smoke, there's mutiny. Besides, where we were going, there was likely to be enough smoke even for his taste. And one good look at the volcano cooking outside was all it took to settle that question and remind everyone that we were training on borrowed time. Two months, 15 days till operational readiness. I knew Devin could keep good time, but wary of putting all our eggs in her basket, I had Margo build us a holographic navigation unit so we could eyeball our way through the inner world if it came down to that. And I started drilling with Lestrella until he could not only fly the adventure without me, but deploy and fire the sonic bore blindfolded if necessary. I need to be sure this ship and crew could survive, even if, for some reason, I didn't. Briggs was assigned with ship security and backup on navigation. And I told Margaret to program a series of emergency drills for us, running the gamut from an onboard fire to an all-out crash. 
Like my uncle's Geo Explorer, the adventure was one of a kind. And while we could guess how the ship might react if things got gnarly, what the crew would do was another story. But whether Margot and I chose well or we just got lucky, I was glad to see they all came through it like the pros they are. And then there was the so-called Book of Knowledge. I thought I recognized a picture of it in Wentworth's office, and I was sure Chalmers could fill me in if anyone could. Well, he did one better by revealing what he claimed was an actual piece of this magical book, supposedly coughed up by Vesuvius over a century ago. And frankly, I had trouble keeping a straight face about it all, but Chalmers, well, he wasn't laughing. According to Devon, the eruption was still months off. But it didn't look that way when I go out and walk the rim alone at night. I knew this ship and crew were ready for anything. But then it never fell to me to be the captain of a mission like this before. So maybe what was troubling me was whether or not I was ready. Dr. Chalmers, Hiram Wentworth. Very nice to meet you. A great enthusiast of your work, Dr. Chalmers. Hi, Mr. Wentworth. Tony Listrella. Mr. Listrella. Hi. Sandy Miller. Vessel and crew worth drinking to, eh, Mr. Wentworth? Mr. Wentworth, Bungo Champagne. One of my more favorite synthetics. Hey, not too shabby. I say, Doctor, well done. A speech. A speech. Ah, uh, Chris? Yes, Mr. Turner. Inspire us. The past 24 weeks haven't been easy on any of us. But your hard work and dedication have paid off. Tomorrow, we're fully operational. One final week of tests to flush out the gremlins on the system. And then we'll just sit on our hands and wait for Old Faithful to blow. Now, I'm not going to stand here and tell you that none of us is in any danger. And that everything will be smooth sailing on the journey because, well, that might not always be true. But I will say what we're doing has got to be done. The potential of what we discover could be the salvation of our planet Earth. Thermal energy sources, pure air that could revitalize our atmosphere. The good doctor here might even discover a cure for cancer and who knows what else. I am so proud to be part of it. And I couldn't have a better crew if I had handpicked every single one of you, which I did. <laughs> <laughs> so here's to us and whatever lays before us or beneath us, or whatever. We are a team, a unit. We are the descenders. The descenders? The descenders. The descenders. That's cool. <laughs> Captain Turner, I detect an unsettling development. Well, forgive me, Devon. We didn't mean to forget you. You're much a part of this ship. Or crew as anyone. To Devon. To Devon. I, Captain, I, I... Well, don't just hang there, babe. Say something. The volcano is about to erupt. What? When? How much time? According to my calculations, we can make it if we launch in 30 minutes. This is no drill. Everybody, fill your stations. Man your station. Let's go. All the time will be back in T-minus 10. The shuttle are going to full power as soon as your butt hits the seat. If anybody's got any questions, ask them on the run. What about the systems tech we need? If we can test on almost everything. I can't think of a better test than you, Doctor. Let's go, people. Put a move on. We're a minute behind already. Unless you plan on getting your hands dirty, Mr. Wentworth, I suggest you get off my ship. My ship, Mr. Turner. My ship.
Give me heads-up display, eruption status, and countdown readouts. We are in pre-programmed launch sequence, Captain. Cancel program and transfer launch control to the helm. You read me? Affirmative. All monitors up and active. Project full eruption in three minutes, and we are at T minus 2.24 and counting. Dr. Peterson, give me fuel and booster status. Boosters armed and fueling. Stand off! Anybody injured? I think I'm all there. I'm okay. Talk about a new ticket. How bad? Can't tell. What does Kevin say? Devin? I detect seven carbon-based life forms. I presume the crew is intact. 
Yes, everyone survived. Get these alarms off, and uh, then I'll need a complete damage report. All major systems appear to be functional. The sonic bore unit is impacted, but repairable. Surface communication is out. I'll need time for further determination. Have you run self-diagnostics? I'm battered, but not broken. I'm gonna shut you down to sleep level for a while until I can factor out your potential for error rate. Maybe you're right. A little rest might be just what the doctor ordered. Devin? I shut her down, but her data systems are available. Can you rely on her to run an atmospheric analysis? We gotta check the hull. Chris, Margo, I'm afraid some of the food has... Well, it's blended itself. It's ruined. You're breaking my heart. I should really uh, gather some specimens. Uh, Captain, if you don't mind me asking, what do we do now? We compile a detailed damage report and effect whatever repairs are necessary for the continuing of the mission. Continue the mission? Are you all blind? Mission over. Briggs. We're finished. Briggs. No, I said we get back Briggs. to the surface and At ease. Hey, relax, all right? According to Devin, the atmosphere is breathable. Well, what if she's wrong? That's the hatch. Give me an outside camera. Sorry for the alarm. You must come and see this, Chris. Talk about breaking through to another world. Just look over here. Briggs, take point. Mistrella, watch our backs. Behold, the inner world. How can there be light? Actually, a self-suspended subterranean bioluminescent mineral source to be precise living rock and maybe more than just rock look at that lake where there's water there's life right and who knows what forms of it we might find here yeah. Yeah. Let's start by being grateful that we're still alive all right i'll second that in motion sight if ever I saw one. Agreed, but we won't be able to explore it unless we get started on some repairs. Turner, the ship. Well, the 
Design worked. No major structural breach. Sure hope somebody popped for the insurance. you're satisfied. Both of you. What the hell happened here? Did I miss something? Oh, just Briggs here shooting up our main control link and a few other miscellaneous but vital relays. I was shooting at someone. Something. It was in the crew quarters. Doing what? I don't know what. Maybe we should check our gear, see if anything's missing. Now, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait. Now, let's get this squared away. Did anybody see anything? Just what or who were we supposed to see, Briggs? We're the only ones down here. Yeah? Well, then who blindsided me over the back of the head? Huh? How do you explain this? Oh, come on, man. That's nothing. Look at this. I got one, too. Yeah, yeah, check this out. All right, all right. Let's go. We got work to do. I trust it's repairable. I think we can crawl. The flying might take a little doing. Estrella, Sandy, Briggs, you're with me. I want to set Homer. Listen up, everybody. Try and stay inside of the ship. We're going to rendezvous here in 30 minutes. Then what? Then we eat. Maybe I should keep an eye on her. Not to worry. I'll go with her. Activated, Captain. 
All right, Homer's in place. Just in case we want to get back. Just say the word. I'm ready. Briggs might be seeing things. But it hadn't made an aggressive move since we found it. With all due respect, Captain, are you out of your mind? First this thing breaks into the ship, then it knocks out Chalmers. Actually, it was my fault. It's bigger than any two of us, and you bring it on board ship. You're out of order, Briggs. The creature's obviously harmless. Now stow the weapon and sit down. You can't hear him what he's doing because, because he's following the beauty. You understand what he's saying? No, but it sounds similar to a Tibetan dialect found in the High Himalayas. I can't believe this. We found the abominable snowman. You mean like a Bigfoot? Please, some respect. Standing in the presence of a life form believed to be extinct or even non-existent. If only we could talk to it. Try this. A Walkman? An AIT. Arl Impulse Transducer. It scans the incoming sounds for patterns of intelligent communication and translates them into something maybe we can understand. I didn't get a chance to test it before we left, so don't expect any miracles. Who are you? What? How did you get here? Keep, keep talking. It adjusts for pitch. How did you get here? We came here through a volcano in this ship to explore beneath the surface of the Earth. Are there more like you? I am of a race that lives within this planet. Where do you live? Where are your people? I live here, in the maze. The maze? I think he's referring to the puzzle of the deep. According to ancient mystics, a portion of the inner world is a tangled web of passages that constantly shift and change direction. Please, Mr. Chalmers, this is no time for hocus-pocus theories. Oh, really? But it is not by chance that I dwell alone in the maze. I must tell you of my crime. I knew it. It was him attacked me on the ship. What were you trying to steal? Briggs! Briggs. Oh, Enough. Uh, Sit down. Away. My people are a gentle race. We live by two commandments. The first one is no harm. We cannot hurt any living thing. But we also live at the hand of fate. It is forbidden to interfere with it in any way. Even saving a life is taboo. A girl was playing at the bottom of a rocky slope. The stones gave way. I grabbed her, saving her life. It just happened. I saw the boulder. I grabbed the girl. I don't know what came over me. It is for this that I was banished to the maze. I shame you with my presence. No. On the surface, we consider the saving of a life to be a sacred act. Your deed was one of profound courage. You are just. Now it's true. Ooh. 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 Ooh.
strangers among us now. Come in a great ship from the overworld to destroy you all. But do as I command, and your people will live. Soon I will cause this great ship of theirs to become lost, Katiak. And then you and your warriors will find before we theorize on the future, perhaps we should make decisions about the immediate, such as what to do with your friend here. You know my boat. I say we video it, take some blood and tissue samples, and put it back. I think he'd make an invaluable addition to the crew. I agree. We can't take on everything we find down here. This isn't Noah's Ark. She's right. We know nothing about this thing. And it could be a man-eater. My people are vegetarian. It's even worse. It's a liberal. Would you like to join us? Become part of our team? Oh, yeah. Oh. Well, now that that's settled, what did they call you at home, big guy? Mm -hmm. what, what is your name? How do others recognize you? Ah, my sounds. We are each given one at birth. Mine is. No! No! Pinto. Oh, Bob's good. Bubba, Ed, Jack, Bob, anything. How's Rocky? George. Chalmers, you found him, you name him. Well, it is a name I always wish my parents had called me. Yeah, the name like Cecil, I'm not surprised. What is it, Chalmers? Daedalus. Daedalus is the Greek god of labyrinths and mazes. Father of Icarus. Everybody, say hello to Daedalus. Yeah, that really rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? Daedalus. Deedle, daddle. Dallas. Dallas. Yeah. That's close enough for me. Dallas. Welcome to the crew. All right, let's run your checks, people. We're going mobile. Tony, we're going to want a tractor clear of this debris. Pick it around. 180 hard right. Aye, aye, Captain. Bridge. Initiate forward scanner. Fargo, set Devon to standby and activate holograph navigation. Scanner is up. Setting Devon to standby and HG navigation activated. Okay, let's truck her out of here, Estrella. Tread circles on and roll. Devon, prepare to fire main engines in maximum lift mode. Firing sequence engaged and action controls. Engines on. Scanner to lift liftoff in three seconds. Activate side thrusters at full, Estrella. Side thrusters on. Devin? Pass this on, Captain. Steady she goes, Tony. All right, Margo. Find us a course out of here. Looks like there's an opening to another cavern. Bearing 227. 227. I got it. Scanner's hit from clear. It'll be a mile, maybe more. It's been a rough start for all of us. But my uncle had been right. There was an inner world. And even at a crawl, I was determined to give it our best shot. I knew Briggs was against keeping Dallas. But for all our high-tech toys, the truth was we were flying blind. And if Dallas could help us get through this maze, then it was worth the risk. But then who or what really did attack Britain back there? And why? The scanner shows us clear for that passage. Hi, and to... Wait, check that. What the... It's impossible. It's sealing itself off. And damn fast, too. Sonic 4 was operational. We can blast our way out. Full reverse. We're out of here. Reversing engines now. Devin, you've got some way to analyze this. Just feel free to jump in any time here. Processing now, Captain. Wait, Chris. Kill that reverse, man. And check your aft monitors. Look! It's closing off. Devin! Hull sensors indicate the passageway is now constricting on all sides. Is she saying we're going to be crushed? Extend hull stabilizers, now! Stabilizers extending, maximum reach. Divert power from main engines to stabilize. 
guns and cut off side thrusters. Do it, Lestrella. Break the buckle in. Everybody brace yourselves. Devin, can you give me a hull pressure readout? Hull pressure now at 12,000 pounds and rising. Pressure now at 18,000 and still rising. Marco, what's our maximum? That was the maximum. We're not gonna make it! Anticipate hull collapse in 30 seconds. 29, 28... Devin, drop ballast and increase internal air pressure. Negative, Captain. Circuit's not responding. Don't fear the way. It will end soon. We're gonna die. He's saying we're gonna die. No. The way, the way of the maze. Fast goes, fast open. What the hell's he talking about? Right. Transfer full power back to main engines and prepare to release the stabilizers on my mark. Thrusters, Lestrella. They're doing thrusters now. We don't know if we can clear that, Turner. We can't stay here. Mark! Please get stabilized. Now a head full for 30 meters at 90 degrees. Hard to pour when I holler. Got it! Come on! Turn it, Lestrella. Hard to pour at 90 degrees. Briggs? Nobody's is expanding, but I can't tell you we're going to fit. Devin! Pressure now at 19,000, Captain. But if kept at full power, the engine vibrations will cause a hull rupture in nine seconds. Eight, seven, six. Make a braking turn to starboard and cut engines to one third. Starting to start. Hull rupture in four seconds. Cut the power, Lestrella! Again! Switch is jammed on full! Rupture in three seconds. Devon, reverse engines! Now! The cat Reversing engine. Negative. Low back failsafe triggered full engine shutdown. Yes. And the hull? Vibrations falling back within normal tolerances. No oh, rupture. <laughs> way to go, way to go, guys! Devin, restart engines. Power to one third. And when Briggs says it's clear, prepare to take the helm. Oh, and uh, thanks for listening. Anytime, Captain. Now that they fear the maze. The ship will keep to the Great Canyon, even as it brings them closer. Go, and silence the voice they left to call them back, before I give them to the Krog. Scanner shows we got a clear channel for as far as it can see, Captain. All right, then I want you all to grab some rest while we got the chance. I'll keep watch up here. I was hoping without the crew around, I could think through what had happened. One instant, this world seemed to want us by the throat, and the next, it was as gentle and amazing as Dallas. But was it really this world, or was there something else I just couldn't see yet? It's beautiful, isn't it? Yes, quite. Uh, what's your heading? What's your hurry? Enjoy the... Mr. Turner, do I have to remind you that at this moment we have lost all relays with our base above? She had a lousy way of saying it, but I guess that meant Margo was scared of something, too. What? What did I do? Did I say anything? Lost Homer. So have I. We better go back. I miss a chance to maybe find out who's been after us since we landed. After us? Turner, you don't think. I don't think it's safe to assume our problems are just happening at random, Doctor. 
Look, just keep us on this course for now and tell the crew break time is over. I want everyone back up on the bridge. Yes. The invaders draw close. I can feel the presence of the bunk within their ship now. Then it is time for their journey to end in the fires of the Krug. Continue bearing on course 195 for... No, wait! Something's... Full stop! Full stop! I see it! I see it! Reverse forward thrusters, Lestrella. Let's try and put down on that shelf we just passed before this cavern shifts anymore. Roger, Captain. Reversing and preparing to land. Our full stop. These are down. Landing sequence engaged. Reducing main engines to one-eighth and beginning descent at 15 meters per second. Switching forward scanners to ground view. Touchdown in four seconds. Three, two, one. We have touchdown. Margo, as soon as we're secured, I want the sonic bore back in operation. If these walls get pushy, I'd like to know we can push back. The rest of you come out with me. I want to check our antenna to Homer. Now let's hope it's only the antenna. Sandy, let's drill and check it out. Briggs, keep an eye out. Briggs, cool, all right. If I could offer my assistance. It's not needed. Oh, really? What possible help could you be to me, Mr. Chalmers? Well, let's see. Uh, I should remind you I have doctorates in electromagnetic theory, charmed quark physics, and applied systems engineering, along with advanced degrees in 18 other varied subjects. to close, Doctor? Listen, Professor, I, I need to say something to you. I apologize. Whatever for? I've always rejected anything or anyone connected with the supernatural, and it's affected the way I thought of you. My dear Miss Peterson, you're simply confused. Let me explain it this way. I believe that science and magic represent mankind's highest aspirations. While at first they seem like opposing forces, at some point, their paths converge. All right, come on, everybody, bring it in. Let's go. My God, look! Hold your fire, hold your fire. 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 My people are familiar with these beasts. What are they? If I'm not mistaken, they're troglodytes. Evolutionary transition from ape to man. Some of the species must have found an amiable environment below the surface, thereby avoiding extinction. You mean missing links? Speaking of missing links, where's Tony? Estrella? This is the scientific chance of a lifetime. Side on. Estrella! We have to gather data on these creatures could prove invaluable in our search for habitability. Estrella! Estrella! Look at this. Wait, 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 wait. Hold it, hold it. Just stay here, just stay here, just stay here. They've got the uncomfortable feeling they've already made contact. All right. Margaret, run a geostability scan. 
I'm going after him. Seven. I need you to run a geostructural analysis of the surrounding area. We might have to be here for a while. There is a disturbing number of serious deep level geostructural faults in the immediate area. <coughs> I do not suggest remaining here for more than two hours. Even that may be pushing it. I'll let the captain know. Let me go with you, Cap. No, I need you here. They need you here. Besides, when we find Estrella, Chalmers here is the only one who might be able to talk them into giving him back. Devin says two hours, maximum. Well then, if we're not back in two hours or haven't made radio contact, you do whatever you have to to save the adventure. What? I say, Chris, is that absolutely necessary? To the good of the many, Professor. Yep, Captain. That's an order. You clear? Looks like we're not the first. Not even close. My God, Chris, look at this. This might be their history. How they came to dwell below the surface through a volcano. Uncle Jim was right. Look, there's more. It appear the trunks don't like visitors. Oh my God, you don't think Estrella is... <laughs> Guarantee they know how to use these things. Then what do we do now? Well, I'll let you know what I think of it. Repeat. Access not authorized. Dallas? It's cold in here. We have to keep it cool to protect the computer system. I do not mean that kind of cold. My people are used to that. I am talking about the woman who lives within this wall. She has no heart. What do you suppose that was all about? Maybe he meant Devin? Thank you. 
Chris, do you read me? Over. Dr. Chalmers, this is Margot. Come in, please. Over. Anything? No. They've still got 20 mi minutes. Oh, God. I can't eat any more of this crap. Force yourself. Smile. They want to have us for dinner. Well, why are they feeding us now? You don't understand. They're fattening us up. They are having us for dinner. What? out there or what? I don't know about you, but I had a real hard time understanding the captain's last order. Well, you know, I couldn't make it out either. Yeah. I didn't hear a thing. I heard him. He said, if we're not back within two hours, we're supposed to leave without him. Ooh. Gear up. We're going after him. You stay here. Oh, I think we should take him with us. He would make an excellent guide. I like it. Devin, I'm putting you on full security alert. What are you doing? You gear up, I get down. Yeah, whatever. Security program loading now. through that passageway beyond. What damn passageway? The one beneath the boulder. Come on. Can you not feel it? The path, it's still warm. It's a dead end. No. Look further. Get up! Lights out! 
They're ugly. But they ain't stupid. They got sentries all over the place. We gotta find a way over that ridge. One more thing, we've got these two big stone heads. They look just like Dallas. Hogs are deathly afraid of my people. They think we are demons. How come it's like pulling teeth to get anything out of you? Oh, no. Miller, help me rig a harness and tackle for the big guy. You got it. Oh, oh, oh. They run for cover, we duck in and grab the captain and the others. Oh, that's sick. Good. Go ahead and puke. That'll scare him even more. It's all the same to me. We won't allow any threats. I've seen guys like him. They just need to be convinced. You've seen guys like him? I don't think so, Briggs. I thought we were your friends. My first. Then why won't you help us? <laughs> we believe that a friend is more important than any law. You get straight over the village, drop these. They detonate on impact. No, no harm. It won't hurt anyone, Dallas. They're just fireworks. Yeah, you'll be the bright spot of their day. You ready? No! Good. 
Give him help, big guy. <laughs> Takeoff protocol. Let's get this thing in the air. Rod, side thrust is going to full. Elif protocol engaged. Main engines firing in eight seconds. Margo, Briggs. Activating HG navigation now, Captain. Scanners up and sweeping. We have ignition on all main engines. Prepare for liftoff in ten seconds. Nine, eight. Time to strap yourselves seven. in, people. Clear to take it out that hole you threw to get us out, Captain. Ahead one quarter and turn us to port. 12 degrees. Engines ahead at 2.5 V, Captain. And bearing 169 just below that clip ahead, Lestrella. Anomaly. Primary rig 
Overloading. Circuit relay failure imminent. Initiating fire control. Ah. I'm forced! Somebody want to tell me who or what the hell that just was? Well, I can't swear to it, but I think that's who's been hounding us since we got here. And I think this is why. For this? But what is it? That piece is only a small part of the Book of Knowledge. It doesn't look like a book. More like a puzzle, really. It's a cosmic force that makes the Holy Grail pale into insignificance. Just before the demise of Atlantis, High priests of the city used a craft to descend into a volcano. Sound familiar? Mythology states that the priests then built, deep within the earth, a legendary library of Atlantis. A library? Probably destroyed. What we saw were only a few pieces of the puzzle. It's a spiritual circuit board of sorts. It contains a mystical energy that could enlighten mankind. However, fall into the wrong hands, it could be a source of evil power. It could enslave the human race forever. He wasn't lying. Who? Wentworth. He knew all about this puzzle. I was supposed to let him know if he found it. Looks like your billionaire has a hidden agenda. World dominion, if you will. How many of these pieces are there? No way of knowing till they're all assembled. It's based on a technology that doesn't yet exist, or rather used to, it was lost with Atlantis. It's a crossing point, the bridge from this world of its finite knowledge to the next one, to the infinite. So it must store... If I'm not mistaken, a combination to the maze. Without it, we may never get out of here. I know this journey that's not been a smooth one. There's not one of us who hasn't had second thoughts, fears about what may lay ahead. But down here, we and only we control our destiny. Our strength is in us as one. And as one, we will survive. Let's do it. With the Captain. Devon, status and helm control, if you please. Maintaining level flight at 50 meters. Forward scanners read all clear, and the helm is yours now, Captain. Pull ahead, Lestrella. Forward. Ever forward. I guess it wasn't until then I realized there exists a strange and unknown place like this in all of us. For me, it was becoming captain. But I'd looked into that darkness now and seen more than I ever thought possible. And the journey was just beginning.